On Ethereum, each smart contract is identified by an address on the blockchain. This address is a long series of characters and numbers that start with a 0x. But how is this address computed? Let's see how this works. Hey, I'm Julian, and on my channel Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development on Ethereum. When smart contracts are deployed on the blockchain, this is part of a transaction. That means that another address has to send this transaction. So we're gonna call this other address the sender address. Every time an Ethereum address sends a new transaction to the network, we increment a value called a nonce. For example, if I just create a new Ethereum address, my nonce is zero. If I send my first transaction, my nonce becomes one. If I send a second transaction, my nonce becomes two, etc., etc. So the address of a smart contract is determined by the sender address and the nonce of the sender address. For the first step, we take the sender address and the nonce, we put them in an array and we anchor them with the RLP protocol. RLP means recursive length prefix encoding and that's a mechanism of the Ethereum blockchain to encode complex data structure like nested arrays. The point of this mechanism is to transport complex data structure over the network. Then we take the result of this operation and we hash it with the SHA-3 function. If you don't know what is a hashing function, that's basically a mechanism to take some data in input and to calculate some fingerprint as an output. So if you change anything in the input data, the fingerprint of the output will be totally different. The output of this SHA-3 hashing function will be a piece of data that is 32 bytes long. So we're gonna take the last 20 bytes of this piece of data and that's gonna be our smart contract address. There is also another way of creating smart contract addresses. That's an other opcode that is called create2. And with this opcode, the smart contract address depends on the sender address and also on the code of the smart contract. But that's much more recent and not yet very used. So in most cases, the first method will apply. If you feel curious about how blockchain and Ethereum work, I've created a full playlist with a lot of video on the topic. I'll see you there.